Communications Lab. Uh, my project is what happens when content providers peer directly with ISPs, Internet Service Providers. So, before I can answer this question, we need to know a little bit more about the Internet. So, the Internet is an interconnection of Internet Service Providers, ISPs. Uh, it's a hierarchy of ISPs. So, at the low end of the hierarchy, we have um, consumer ISPs, like Time Warner Cable, Comcast, Verizon. And then at the higher end of the hierarchy, we have higher tier ISPs, also known as tier 1 ISPs, like Level 3 and Cogen. Um, so there are also different links on the internet. The, the link between the uh, consumer ISPs and the internet consumer, like you and I, is called the access link. So the link between your phones and your service provider uh, is the access link. Now anything above that uh, are tra uh, transit links and peering links. Okay, so. Um, the FCC, which regulates uh, all the internet, among other things, uh, has a set of net neutrality regulations that applies to this internet. Now, what is net neutrality? Uh, basically, net neutrality is the principle that all traffic on the internet should be treated equally. No traffic can be prioritized or throttled over other traffic. Uh, so, those regulations that the FCC um, has are mainly focused on the access link of the internet. Um, although, there are a bunch of issues that can happen on the higher part of the internet, the higher tiers, that can cause end-user quality of service issues. Uh, a perfect example of this was back in 2014. Uh, this is a graph of, what, of the, the mean throughput of servers on uh, Tier 1 ISP, so I'll explain a little bit more about that. So, basically, Comcast users, who also had a subscription, subscription to Netflix, were having trouble with uh, video quality on Netflix. So they were having porn Netflix streams. Um, so a company called MLab uh, came in. They had servers set up on Tier 1 ISPs. So they had one set up on Cogen and Internet. Uh, Cogen and Internet, they're both Tier 1 ISPs. Um, and they tested the throughput uh, over a long period of time from these Tier 1 ISPs all the way down to the Internet consumer like you and I. And they found that uh, data traveling through the Cogen ISP had um, it was slower than the internet ISP, which is another tier 1 ISP. So this means that Cogent's uh, peering links were not totally uh, set, they were, they were congested. Um, internet, uh, sorry, um, MLab proposed that the reason for this is because since Netflix is such a huge product, it is congesting up all of Cogent's uh, links, and so Cogent did not want to pay to upgrade their infrastructure so that uh, Netflix traffic could buy. Instead, they let Netflix traffic suffer, so that uh, in order to preserve itself, Netflix needed to peer directly with Tier 2 ISPs, so the lower ISPs. Um, now, by peering with these consumer ISPs, the Tier 2 ISPs, really, uh, they alleviated the congestion that was going through Cogent, and the internet was sent back into its normal flow again up here. So basically, this red line is Cogent traffic, and this Gray line was internet traffic. And as on February 24th, Netflix, instead of peering with Cogent, they peered directly to a bunch of tier 2 ISPs, and then we see that Cogent traffic goes back up to normal uh, once this agreement happens. Now, whether this is a good thing is debatable. Uh, it did provide better internet service to generally the whole internet, uh, well, to especially Cogent users. Um, but a company like Netflix, which has so much market, um, this has so much power and so much money, it was able to directly peer with uh, consumer ISPs, although another company, a uh, smaller contact provider, may not have the same resources or, or market power in order to do that. Uh, in the case that it does not have that market power, it may just die out because of its uh, low quality of service. So uh, its subscribers may just stop uh, subscribing because it, they can't get um, a good product. So we know that issues can be uh, we know that end user quality of service issues can be caused from high tier ISP peering. So I set out to find exactly the impact that uh, higher tier ISP peering has on end user quality of service. There's a tool called Genie. Uh, it's a network of network test beds located around the United States, usually at university campuses. We have one here at, at uh, Poly. Um, and what a network testbed is, is basically you can create your own custom network topology. So you can create a custom set of nodes, they're called. And you can connect the nodes with certain links and change the capacities on those links. And then you can SSH or log into those nodes and run tests and collect data. 
Uh, so I collected this, I'm sorry, I did not collect, I created this topology, uh, which is, it mimics the hierarchical structure of the internet. It has a content provider paired with a uh, internet service provider, and then all the traffic trickles down to their consumers, okay? Um, and I, I ran traffic all the way from Netflix, we'll say, all the way down to these consumers while limiting this peering link between the tier one ISPs. This is supposed to mimic what happened, uh, basically what happened with Cogen uh, and internet. So, from this, I collected, from this uh, topology, I collected this data, and a brief explanation of this graph. This x-axis is the capacity of the connection between these two links, the peering links here, the peering link here. And the y-axis is the video quality, which is actually the log of the bits per second of the video stream. Um, and we see this coffee, or sorry, it looks orange, this orange color uh, figures correspond to this <coughs> node, and these blue figures correspond with this node. And it goes from 20 megabits, 20 megabits per second capacity all the way up to 100 megabits per second. And we see a trend that as it goes down to 20, the uh, average uh, video quality of the this consumer uh, gets more unreliable and and less uh, higher. It gets lower quality, while generally this consumer uh, this consumer node stays at a high video quality of um, no matter of what the link is. Uh, so what we can conclude from this is that yes, content providers appear directly with. ISPs have an advantage, a competitive advantage over other content providers. Um, they can provide better service to their customers. However, this may not be such a good thing because other content providers that cannot pay for it may find themselves in the dust, left in the dust by other content providers. Um, I'd like to thank NYU and the Center for Advanced Technology and Telecommunications.
Um, all that traffic was going through Cojet. Um, it was congesting up all of the pairing links of Cojet. So uh, it, instead of Cojet paying more to upgrade the infrastructure, um, which would cost a bunch of money, but it would it would allow them to accept all the traffic <coughs> Netflix was pushing. Instead of doing that, they just uh, let let it be, and they let Netflix traffic suffer in this graph, as shown. And then, because Netflix didn't want to lose subscribers, they had to instead of peer with Cogent, they peer with tier two ISPs. So they did. They paid for the direct peering links to get. Uh, it's like feeding uh, all the traffic right into the tier two ISP right down here. So it completely ignored. The tier one ISPs it skipped right down uh, lower on the chain to, to force it into the consumers uh, more uh, with better video quality. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Um, could you just very quickly in that third graph just explain real quickly what how the uh, the blue is different than the orange and what the finding is? Sure. Okay. So this these orange figures correspond with this consumer. These blue figures correspond with this consumer, all right? The x-axis is a varying capacity of this peering link. So basically, uh, on this side is 20, on this side is 100. It goes in increments of 20 megabits per second. At this side, at this end, this link is limited at 20 megabits per second capacity. Traffic will only go through there at 20 megabits per second. Now this y-axis is um, the video quality which is the log of the bits per second of video streams, of the video streams that were uh, received by these consumers. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the name of this type of graph is, but it takes the variance of the um, collected video quality, because we did multiple, multiple trials, and it plots them out here. And what a big uh, figure, a tall figure means, is that there's more variance in the data collected, and what is smaller, of course, a smaller figure means that uh, there's less variance, and the higher it is, the better quality it is. So we can see that at a lower capacity, this consumer has more uh, variance, so a less reliable uh, connection, and also a worse connection than the uh, direct peered ISP, which is this. So this is meant to represent the consumer that's underneath a direct peering uh, ISP with a content provider. Um, does that answer your question? And the, uh, it, it does. And the dot in the middle represents what? This? No, the dot in the middle of each line. Oh, it's just the center, the uh, mean of each one of these. Data the mean of the? Of the data collections, because we, we okay. had multiple trials. Got it. And we averaged them. Thank you. Any more questions?